Hello, you're watching CyberDoc. Today, this video is going to be a repair for iPhone 5, backlight, coil, backlight, IC, and 3 backlight filter changes and repair replacement for iPhone 5 logic board. So as you can see right now in the video, you have the iPhone 5 logic board that's been exposed. The upper metal shielding is being removed with quick alloy or cyberdark alloy you can find from cyberdarklc.com so and there's also another video showing you how to use the alloy that's in picture to safely remove the heat shell frame from I, ipad 5 sorry iphone 5 logic board and you can see that little coil in the middle that's the old iphone 5 backlight coil that's being removed with quick alloy there's also our flux in the video and now you can also see the solder wick that's on the side it's made of copper it was used to remove the metal shielding so as you well know that iPhone 5 Apple started to solder the heat shield onto the larger board which kind of silly because it actually increased the production cost I'm not sure what was the purpose of this, maybe to prevent people from tempering with the larger board or competitor from reverse engineering it, which either way it will make this repair a little bit more uh, hindrance due to the fact that you have to first desolder the heat shield successfully without damaging any components before you can reach the larger board components, such as the backlight IC which the tweezer is holding right now. So just use the low temperature melting quick alloy from cyberdogalc.com. You can easily remove it like the uh, metal shield solder. So right now, um, the backlight IC is being placed onto the larger board. You want to be careful of this IC because it does have an orientation and polarity charge. So you want to line the side with the lines with the same side that was on the board. Uh, if you're not sure, you can either look at another larger board with the same like, correct orientation or go on our website cyberdogalc.com and refer to the picture that we have on our website. And visit our solution website if you want to sign up as a member at iphonebacklight.com. Um, for example, this repair video and many, many other SMD iPhone iPad repair solution will be posted and first posted in iPhoneBacklight.com as it's being worked out by us. Okay, so basically um, at this stage of the repair, the iPhone Backlight Coil and iPhone 5 Backlight IC is already been removed from the board with quick alloy. Now I'm placing a new one. Uh, I've already, I just placed a new IC onto the logic board and now you just put it into the correct orientation you do this under a microscope don't I mean you can do this without a microscope but I, I wouldn't do it <laughs> I, I like to see what I'm doing so by a microscope I made a video in case of those of you wondering uh, what microscope to buy I made a video on a very cheap microscope for like $200 USD dollars that I are using this repair video um, I had a video for that, so search for it. Just go to my videos and search for the microscopes uh, review video I made. You can get that from Amazon.com. It's an MSCO microscope. Or you can get an upgrade version, which is about $800 USD, which in my opinion, it's worth it to get the better version. But Or you could just use stick with the uh, economic $200 version of the M scale microscope. It's a stereo microscope. You only need a ton 10 to ton 20 zoom lenses. Um, you're pretty much gonna use all time 10. You're rarely gonna use times 20 for soldering. Okay so the new iPhone 5 backlight IC is being re being placed onto the larger board. If you remove it it's actually pretty well, it's difficult without the right tool or the right uh, material, but with quick alloy, it's actually pretty easy to remove. You just put a little teeny bit of alloy, and then you, you put it on next to it. 
you use the soldering iron, use a very fine tip soldering iron to heat it out to the to the close enough proximity, and then you heat blast it with flux. Always use flux. Always use good quality flux. Um, you can get the very good quality flux from our website cyberdoglc.com, or you could buy somewhere else. But do not use anything that's sold in China. And I don't know what's wrong with the Chinese vendors or what, whoever make those flocks. They, they have no fucking... Sorry, I just used the wrong word. Uh, they have no freaking idea what they're doing with the, the flux formulation. I, I don't know what is it in those flocks. It's just, it's horrible. So, yeah, you use only um, flocks that's made in USA or just buy from us. All our flocks is made and produced in USA. And not from China, because I, I have past experience with Chinese flocks. They, they're just horrible. Maybe there's some good Chinese flocks. I don't know. I just never had any experience with it. Okay, so anyway, just get good flock. Good, get good RMA or uh, any any RMA Rosen base or synthetic um, no cling flocks. So once you put down the component, I apologize for the angle of the camera. It's pretty much blocking it. You put the components onto a proximal location. You already have some low melting alloy, some quick alloy, super dark alloy that's already on the board. Now you just heat out the component with flux, the new component, the new new backlight uh, coil and IC, and it will adhere to the alloy. And you don't for this step, you don't even need very high temperature to do this because the alloy melts around 60 degrees Celsius anyway. So anything above 60 degrees Celsius, which is like a, a higher, blower, drier temperature will melt the alloy and let you solder this component in place. So I, I usually like to set my soldering uh, hot air to 200 degrees Celsius or 250. So now the hot air soldering process is done. Oh, by the way, if you had a heat plate, you could have used a heat plate for this process too. It's probably easier. Um, or soldering often. Anywho, so the soldering process is done. Now I'm just uh, currently in the video, it, I'm expecting the soldering job by using a pink pick. Gently push it, see if it's soldered on. And while the solder is still molten, so you can see the component moved a little bit. But you always want to examine visually with a microscope. That's why it's so important to have a good stereo microscope in your workbench. To do this with naked eyes, it's just it's hard. You're almost working up almost blind stage because the uh, backlight chip is so small. The coil you probably could solder this with you know without any magnification. But for the filters and for the backlight chip for iPhone 5, it's, it's near impossible to see. And I have perfect vision 2020, and I can't even do this without microscope assist. So now once you're done with the soldering job, you're happy with the result. You want to brush it and clean it with uh, ethan ethanol alcohol or isopropyl alcohol if you cannot find ethanol alcohol. They usually sell it in um, ethanol alcohol. It's really kind of pure vodka with a little tint of uh, benzene. Benzene is toxic. So it's, it's uh, people call it 
ethyl ethyl alcohol, but it's really not 100% ethyl alcohol because it's technically toxic. So don't drink those. If you want to spend a lot of money and clean this with vodka, you could do it. But nah, don't don't waste vodka. Just use isopropyl alcohol, ethyl alcohol if you can find it. Um, ethyl alcohol smells a little bit better than isopropyl alcohol. That's the only difference, I think. Also, a little bit more stable. Okay, now I'm positioning the larger board in the video to locate the three backlight filters. iPhone 5 is funny. Um, the previous iPhones only have two filters, which makes sense. Um, electricity goes into the screen, into through the larger board, through one filter, and then it comes out from one, from the screen because. You know, once it goes in, the screen has come out. And it goes through another second filter on iPhone 4 and iPhone 4S or in the previous generation of iPhones. I suspect it's due to the fact that iPhone 5 has a, a retina. Well, maybe it's not because iPhone 4S has retina screen. But maybe it's because the bigger screen or whichever, it require more power regulation and more power current. I know for a fact that the, uh, the iPhone 5 coil generate much higher uh, in inductance and voltage through it, so it's it, it literally gives more power. So maybe that's why the filter require um they require more than one filter to go to complete the circuit. You just require more tracks. So as a su as a such, when you do this repair, you want to re replace all these parts, especially if they corroded, like in this this example in this iPhone. You definitely want to replace all three filters. Now I'm pointing out the location of those filters. Um, if you want to know the location of these filters, you can visit our website cyberdocllc.com. Again, the cyberdocllc.com. Next to the uh, the item for iPhone 5 backlight repair kit, the, so the picture of where the filters are located and any other associate part to backlight circuitry. And all this is possible with these solutions. You can also find them before they're even being um, posted on cyber.ilc.com at our CSI iPhoneBacklight.com. And this is a new site we're experimenting with posting all and every iPhone, iPad, even some, some of the MacBook Pro so re soldering and rework solutions and guides on iPhoneBacklight.com. So check it out. Uh, it is a pay subscription member site. So just check out the site. It's called iPhoneBacklight.com. And if you need any parts or so, uh, soldering equipment, soldering parts, for example, quick alloy is our product line for low melting solder alloy for desoldering and soldering, you can find it on cyberdocllc.com. Cyber also the flocks that we use in all our repairs, you can also find in cyberdocllc.com. Again, we, we use only US made flocks and yeah, we have several different lines of flocks, so you want to experiment and see which one works best for you. To, in my opinion, they all work pretty much about the same. It just depends on what color and smoke you prefer. So what I did here to the backlight filter now is I put a bit of flux on it and put a little teeny mini piece of the quick alloy, a, a chunk of it, a little little piece next to it. You don't want too much because it's going to make solder bridges to these neighboring components. So you just heat up the solder and then you heat up next to the component and you will desolder it in no time. Put, provided you use quick alloy, not... Um, you use a cyberdock low melting alloy. You do not use regular leaded alloy that will destroy your board. You will literally solder that alloy onto the board and you have no way to clean it. Only use low melting temperature cyberdock alloy to desolder. Um, also, provided you have good flux. If you use crappy flux, then sorry, your board is going to get destroyed. Um, most flocks are corrosive and most flocks are very um, sticky. Also, it makes burning rust. I don't know why the Chinese flocks make burning rust. So, don't use those flocks. Use good flocks.
Okay, so yeah, and then you can remove those uh, little filters, those three of them, without damaging the larger board. You do not want to lift these pads because they're very, very sensitive copper trace pads. Any excess pressure, meaning if you don't have a at the right temperature or using a desoldering alloy tool, you're gonna break those pads when you're using a tweezer to to mess with it. So you really need to make sure those uh, filter needs to be removed clean and properly. The other way to do it, but I, I prefer the way I'm doing this video. Um, you can also use a soldering tweezer, but in my experience, the soldering tweezer actually generates way too much heat, and it's not exactly precise. Um, you either heat up too much or heat up too little, and then you end up damaging these little filters. They're very little. Um, to use a microscope. The, the reason I didn't notice my hand is blocking the entire view while I was recording is because I'm using a microscope and all I can see is the I see the filter. Um, I didn't pay attention to the big camera. So, well, now that you can see what's going on anyway, even if the hand is not blocking. So just bear with me and imagine that you've seen the filter being soldered. Uh, check out my other video. I'm gonna, I think I'm going to upload soon once I can find it because I did this repair a while back. Um, I did this recording a while back and I need to look for the microscopic vis uh, version view of this repair. I also recorded that. Um, I'm going to upload that soon as soon as I can uh, annotate it, that video as well. So yeah, there's not, not, not that much to it. It's really just flux on, uh, desoldering alloy from CyberDoc. LLC.com, you put that on and you solder, heat it up, then desolder it. And once it's desoldered, the residue solder is good to use. So you put the new parts on and you heat it up with hot air, uh, low temperature. You don't need, well, you could use high temperature if you want, but why risk it? Or you could, yeah, actually risk it. It will speed up the process. It's not like it's gonna damage the component. You can even use 300 degrees Celsius hot air gun all you like. Um, because the temperature, the te actual temperature coming out of the hot air gun is not going to be 300 degrees if you set it at 300 degrees. It's probably going to be like 200 something degrees. So you could play with that measurement um, when you do this reward soldering. So once once it's clean, what I'm doing now is I'm using ethyl alcohol again with a to toothbrush. This is a Sunny Sonic Care cleaner, I think. Yeah, Son Sonic Care toothbrush. You don't need the Sonic part. It will make a mess, but you could use the sonic part. Uh, I choose this toothbrush because this is the, the brush head is very fine and soft, and it's just what I happen to have. So you don't, you don't necessarily need this toothbrush, you can use any toothbrush. You don't really need to worry statistic charge line much, because after all, I'm using ethyl alcohol on a giant metal, uh, metal I guess, ground. The whole thing is made, the aluminum tray underneath is, is a giant metal sink. So uh, there's no way you can make static charge on top of that thing. Besides, the battery is not plugging. So the so static charge is not going to damage any of these components. As long as nothing is plugged in. You don't need to worry about if the circuit is open. And also you're very well grounded. For example, you're, you're working on the ground. So. Don't worry about toothbrushes too much. So at this stage of the repair, I am unwrapping the three backlight filters. Careful with these filters, they're very, very small. So Take them out under microscope, put it on, on top of a white piece of paper. Whatever you do, just keep them in place or even work them on a, a magnetic chart or magnetic magnet. You can, oh by the way, you can also buy those magnetic magnet for iPhone 5 disassembly um, from cyber.lc.com and that. And those magnets are actually very good at opening these small um, SMD components on top of because the background is white and they're magnetic. So those parts isn't gonna fly away. For example, if you're changing a coil or a small giant, small, small, teeny filter, when you open those packaging, those paper packaging, you're not careful, they're gonna fly. And when they do fly, you will never find them. And you have to order another one, which is a hassle. 
all by itself. So get some of those magnets, uh, magnet charts from wherever you get it. it. Doesn't really matter, but you can you can get it from cyberdogalc.com and open your components on top of it. They don't they wouldn't fly so far if they like they ground down to the magnet. And actually, it could it could be potentially advantageous to uh, magnetize those little teeny filters. It, it won't damage them from magnets. Again, magnet can damage anything on this larger board. I don't know who came up with the crazy idea that magnet can damage. Magneticity can damage the larger board. Nonsense. They need to go back to elementary school. Anyways, um, there's nothing, there's no movable part on iPhone 5, so you can damage anything with magnets. So anyways, you charge up the components and then you, you Put on the iPhone 5, which is gonna hopefully is gonna uh, adhere to the solder pads. So right now, I, or you could use flux, like a tacky flux I'm using. You put a bit of flux and you put the teeny filter on top so they don't fly away. And since the flux is kind of sticky, it's gonna stick the parts onto the logic board. And all you have to do is just use two pins or two needles to orient the filter. This filter has no orientation preference so you don't need to worry about plurality here. As long as they are aligned to the uh, proximal location of the solder pad, you're good to go. And once you have done that, do all three of them or do it one by one, it's up to you. Uh, I did it one by one in this video, but you can very well do all three of them if you're short on time. Then you heat it up. You heat it up to I set it to 250 or 200 degrees Celsius and I'm pretty sure the heat coming out is probably around 100 degrees Celsius I don't know uh, and you want to play with your heat gun your heat gun and this heat gun is not going to be have the same profile the important thing is you want to go over 300 degrees Celsius because that will stop burn off the parts on the board the, the board the larger board from Apple is designed to withstand within 300 degrees Celsius. So it's not going to damage at 300, but if you go out to 400 degree or 350, there's a chance you might stop burning off stuff. So don't go that high. Hence, comes back to the importance of the lower melting solder we use in this video. I honestly don't know how to do rework anymore without this, um, without low melting solder. I probably wouldn't want to do this repair if all I got is a hair, uh, hot air gun and soldering iron. The tip must be really, really fine otherwise. It, it will be really hard because these things are so teeny and so they're so fragile. The, the solder pad on these are so, so, so fragile. Don't use too much force on it. Just gently brush it, like brushing just imagine you're brushing yourself gently on the skin, light. You don't really need to heat up that long. Um, uh, in the video, is just for demonstrate purpose. So I heat up a long time, but in reality, when you actually do this without getting recorded all the time, you, you can heat it up uh, at high temperature right away and get it done. Right now, I'm, I'm really just it, it's a little advantage of heating it along because you get all the solder um, molten and in liquid liquid foam. Hence, you get a much better bonding at it. Always resupply your flux if your flux runs dry on the board. The flux itself is gonna activate the metal. Or in in another words, it's gonna de de ionize. Oh, sorry, not de ionize. De oxidate the metal used by the activate acid inside and it also more importantly in this repair since the flux I use doesn't really have very strong acid in it by um, definition because there's no clean flux no acid in there it's just weak acid more importantly the flux is there to conduct heat to supply equal distribution of the heat to the component you want to solder so, yeah. In surface mount component soldering, the flux doesn't serve the same purpose as um, 
welding per se because you don't really use hydrochloric acid on you don't want to use hydrochloric acid on it otherwise it will eat through the board slowly not right away so and now I'm cleaning the board again with uh, ethyl alcohol if you don't have ethyl alcohol use isopropyl alcohol it's just fine it only smells a little bit weird with isopropyl alcohol and that's pretty much it uh, the repair is finished now I'm just doing almost unnecessary cleaning it depends on the flux you use I am a little superstitious so I always clean my board I don't, don't really like to have a gunk of flux on it so it's up to you it's better to do that because either way the flux has some acid in it so it's, it's best to clean it no clean or not doesn't matter what formulation, flux or flux. Flux need to have a little bit of acid. And that's the end of the repair. So what I did in this repair is I solder onto, you see the little black square? I solder on the backlight coil 5.5, backlight IC chip, and three iPhone 5 backlight filters. Thank you for watching. I will see you in my next repair. Uh, you could post your comment below if you have any questions or any suggestions or any uh, future repair requests or tutorials. Again, um, visit my website cyberdocrlc.com for more repair parts or solutions. Also, my other website, iphonebacklight.com for more repair solutions and updates and com it's a community-based forum to as well however it is a pay uh, membership site so it's not exactly free all the time they, there are some um, repair repair solutions on iphone backlight that's retired and those are free to public domain and you can check those out and, and enjoy the video thank you for watching i will see you next time Oh, forgot about this part. Uh, for those of you are watching, still watching, this is iPhone 5 backlight coil. It comes in uh, plastic packaging. If you buy from us, iPhone, uh, sorry, cyberdogalc.com. I can't stress that enough. It's hard to say, I guess. Um, okay, anyway, so this is the iPhone 5 backlight IC. It comes in black packaging. It's very small. But it's not as small as the iPhone 5 backlight filters. You will need three of these for each iPhone 5. You might want to buy more just in case they fly away. They are very small. They do tend to fly or do it on a magnet. Alright, so that, that will be all. Thank you, folks. Thank you, folks.